Good Wednesday evening, everybody, from the home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Hope you've had a pleasant day across the Mid-South area. Finally got the blue skies back in the Mid-South, which is very nice. The rain has moved out. We're still looking at pretty dry conditions out there. Numerous burn bands remain in effect across parts of the area, thanks to the fact that we haven't had enough rainfall for quite some time. But at least tonight, we will be looking at some very quiet conditions where it comes to anything involving stargazing. The air is very dry. The conditions not too bad out there. A little bit on the brisk side. Should be able to see some more meteors for the torrid meteor shower coming up. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but as of right now, looking at cloud cover across the area, the view from Penn State Meteorology is showing the clouds off to the south and east, and will continue that direction into the rest of the evening, so looking very pleasant across much of the area into the rest of the night tonight. Should be dry and pleasant, probably not too much to worry about in the way of cloud cover out there, and also doing pretty good where it comes to, again, outdoor temperatures. A bit on the brisk side, already this evening, but it's going to be even cooler into overnight, so not looking too bad out there. So what can you see across the Mid-South area? Well, there will be a couple of things coming up for this evening. The About the only thing you're going to be able to see is what's left over from a lacrosse rocket body, and that is going to be showing up later on this evening, and that's about it. There's not going to be too much of anything else. It's going to be really naked eye bright. This will be appearing into and around the area of the northeastern horizon, climbing its way back up to around the area close to and into around the middle of the sky, upwards of the uh, areas close to the north and east, going from the north west of the northeast it'll be disappearing before it hits the constellation of Cassiopeia shaped like a W. This one again rising at about 642 uh, for this evening so that again could be something you take a look at there. Now tomorrow morning very bright and very visible the secret space plane, the OTV-4, otherwise known as the Boeing X-37B, will be on its way upwards and will appear in the sky at about 446 in the morning. That, again, will be on its way downwards toward the eastern horizon, uh, very close to the area of Jupiter, just to the left of Jupiter, and that will be fading from view at about 10 till 5 in the morning. So, yes, it will be very bright uh, out there, very cool and very early, but that will be about the best thing you'll be able to see out there uh, for the afternoon and evening hours. This is a very special day, the birthday of astronomer and cosmologist Carl Sagan, November 9th, 1934. He was born, t-shirt commemorating his uh, work on the Voyager spacecraft and the Voyager record that's seen the, with the pulsar map on the left-hand side of your screen. He starred in a television series called Cosmos. He was a very prolific writer and one of my main reasons for being interested in science. Very good, inspirational person that helped you understand a little bit more about the natural universe and a little bit more about what was going on out there in the universe and how much there was out there, galaxies and stars and nebulas and black holes, and how important it is for us to keep ourselves grounded here on Earth in the sense that we need to take care of each other. The Voyager 1 probe was several billion miles out in the solar system, in fact, about 4 billion miles out when it took this picture. It doesn't look like too much, but a little bit of filtering and some pictures from about 4 billion miles away and zoomed in on a particular location when it was trying to take a picture of all the planets in the solar system reflecting lights back this direction. It was able to capture this. What exactly is this? Well, this is a picture of the Earth. It's kind of difficult to see, but in that bright yellow stripe on the right-hand side of your screen, this is a very famous uh, photograph called the pale blue dot and you have to be looking very close to see this matter of fact we take this and we zoom into it the colors are thanks to a spectrometer the uh, seeing the colors out there the light bouncing off of glinting off the spacecraft camera housing if I'm not mistaken and that caused this beam of light to focus in very perfectly on our home planet as a matter of fact what you're looking at takes up about a tenth of a pixel that is planet Earth Earth from 4 billion miles out. If you've never seen this before, definitely want to look it up. His book, Pale Blue Dot, is not to be missed when it comes to things involving science and cosmology and making things easy enough to understand. But this right here shows you how small our planet is and why we really need to take care of each other you know, as we look our way out into the rest of the cosmos, hopefully beginning to get more in the way of space exploration done. One of the books that I should definitely recommend is Cosmos by Carl Sagan. 
the companion book to the TV series from about 1980. Learned a lot since then. If you've never seen it before, you may want to check out part of the movie called Contact. This is from his novel. It's a science fiction novel uh, set in 1999 and following when Earth and people on the Earth, especially the radio astronomers, discover a radio signal coming from deep space and they managed to translate it and find information about a structure they could build to travel to the stars. A team of astronomers and scientists goes out to find the people who sent the message in the first place and they find out a lot more than that. Jodie Foster plays Ellie Arroway, the doctor in charge of finding the signal. They were translated pretty well into a movie. But the book, as far as I'm concerned, is a lot better than that. And this is, again, a great opportunity for uh, you to take a look. It's a good piece of science fiction. It would be nice if it happened, but unfortunately has not happened yet, as far as we know. So something to think about when it comes to uh, extraterrestrial intelligence. Places like SETI and the Planetary Society, good place to go to uh, for information on that. Check out more about Skyblog 3 at available at wreg.com slash weather and also on the various social media networks. Uh, out across the Mid-South. Uh, quick aside before we wrap things up, again, Carl Sagan, one of my per personal favorites, one of the people who really kept me involved with things like science and really broadening my horizons where it comes to looking out into the cosmos. It's not just all about looking at a telescope. It's about much more than that. It's about what makes up the planets, what makes up the galaxies, everything in between here and there, and more importantly, the stuff that we have not not discovered yet. There's so much out there to discover that we really need to put the effort into that. Yes, we have a lot of problems here on the ground. Human beings always have and always will have those problems, but we do have a lot out there that drives us forward that we need to take a look at, and that is what really drives me as a scientist and always will. This is something that will always be an inspiration to me. If you haven't checked it out, make certain you take a look at his book, uh, The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark. This right here, a very good book uh, to read when it comes to the idea of science and making certain that you have the ability to think and explore and ask questions. It's what scientists do. And if you've got a, a budding scientist in your family, this is an excellent book to recommend. And some of his other books, too. Murmurs of Earth, Broca's Brain, The Dragons of Eden, Cosmos, Contact, Comet, all those are very good uh, for scientific purposes. So something like this is something that, again, science in your family, there's probably someone in your family younger who would love to know more about science and this is going to be one of the better places you can go to one of the best authors that I've found out there in a long time and I've been reading his stuff since 1980 so 30 years plus on there to think about that not just a meteorologist I'm also an amateur astronomer I love stuff like that and that's why I do these reports to make certain you know what's going on out there and we can bring more astronomy to more people helping people understand what's beyond the blue out there and what's out into the night sky this is where we can explore very easily from the ground just by looking up at things like satellites and planets, and we have all that out there. Again, the Torrid Meteor Shower peaking into Friday. You should be able to see Saturn, Venus, and Mars in the south to southwestern skies later on tonight. So that's looking pretty good, and no problems at all for visibility out there. Sun's going down, losing the light here in the News Channel 3 backyard, so we're going to wrap this up. Thanks again for uh, tuning in for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's astronomy blog called Skyblog 3. Thanks a lot for joining me, and remember when it comes to astronomy, astronomy or science, always keep looking up.